Hmm, number 13 from the 2015 Advanced Higher Maths. These little complex number equations, they can be a little bit tricky. It tells you to do that, but that's what you'd have to do anyway in the first place, because the only way you solve these is by equating real and imaginary parts. So this first one, it just says solve. It doesn't give any dictation of how many solutions there might be. So that's obviously x plus iy that's been squared. Now the modulus would mean the length of position vector of z in the Argand diagram, I feel like that's x squared and y squared, square root of it, so that will go back to x squared plus y squared minus 4. Well, first thing is, there's no imaginary part here, we'll have to expand this. So square the first, x squared, twice the product, that's plus 2xyi, square the last would be y squared, but the i squared makes it a minus y squared. And that equals, I'll just put these all together, x squared plus y squared minus 4 is just the real part. I'll not finish this bit off anyway. x squared minus y squared is the real part. And 2xy is the imaginary part. Now I'll do this. x squared plus y squared minus 4 is the real part. And there's no imaginary part. So now you equate the real and the imaginary parts. Do the real parts first. No, we'll do the imaginary parts first. Right? Imaginary parts. That means that 2xy should equal 0. Now straight away, that tells you that either x equals 0 or y equals 0. Right, let's see what the real part tells us. The real part tells us that x squared minus y squared equals x squared plus y squared minus 4 x squared disappear from this equation. And if I take that over and take that over, I've got 2y squared equals 4. So y squared is 2. So y is plus or minus root 2. And the important thing is, y is not 0, which means that x must be 0. So there's my two solutions then. My solutions are going to be z equals either root 2i or negative root 2i. Let me go to shoot that down z equals negative root 2i. Compared to getting some other marks, it's a wee bit convoluted, this. Now, with part b, it just changes the other side into a completely imaginary part. Oh, I've already missed what I had there. <coughs> Put it down again. x plus iy squared equals i times... Oh, I forgot what it was x squared plus y squared, obviously for the square of the modulus, minus 4. And that's x squared plus 2xyi minus y squared equals this. I'll just leave that the way it is. What's a writing? So x squared minus y squared is the real part, and 2xyi is the imaginary part. So here I've got no real part, and x squared plus y squared minus 4 is the imaginary part. Now you do the same again. You equate the parts. Which part will I equate first of all? What about the reals? Is that what I did last time? Can't remember. So the real part says x squared minus y squared equals zero. Well, it tells you something. That tells you that x squared equals y squared, which means that x equals plus or minus y. In other words, they could have the same, they're the same numbers, but they could have the same signs or they could have opposite signs. What about the imaginary parts? The imaginary part says that 2xy is equal to x squared plus y squared minus 4. There's a bit suspicious stuff there. Right, I think I'll put it this way and read it that way. x squared bringing over the minus 2xy plus y squared equals 4. There's a wee factorisation there. That's just x minus y squared is equal to 4. I could just leave it that way around. Rather than bringing it together and making a difference of two squares, I can just say, whoops, that x minus y equals plus or minus 2. So I've got these two statements to compare now. Well, if I split this one up, you've got that means either x minus y equals 2 or x minus y equals negative 2. They're not, they don't have to be solved at the same time. Those aren't simultaneous. Those are just two conditions that could apply. But you know that they must be the same number. So 
that number must be, since x is equal to y numerically, these two numbers must be the same to make a 2. So in this case, that would have to be that you would have x equal to 1 and y equal to negative 1. And for this one, that would be x equals negative 1 and y equals 1. They satisfy the conditions 1 and 2, so those must be my solutions. So my final answer is, and I'll, well, I'll, say I'll stick by it, is z either equals 1 minus i, or the other solution is z equals negative 1 plus i. Maybe I should have been highlighting the critical lines here. That was a critical line, and I suppose this bit here. Those were the conditions we had.